What's up, guys? Coming to you today with a big update on the Real Estate Commission lawsuit. Nothing we didn't see coming, um, but it is becoming more and more official. The DOJ actually basically said the settlement that Remax Anywhere and Keller Williams put forth is basically inadmissible. Like, we don't like it. Um, not the money part. The money part, I'm sure, is fine. The, the terms of the settlement. Right. They they do not want real estate commissions to be coupled the way that they are now. Why is that? We're going to dig into this. I'm going to share with you, you know, everything about what's happening right now, where we're going and the possible outcome. So every single week I bring you whatever the biggest story is in real estate. Uh, I also do a video every week. Uh, and concerning real estate coaching, if you're a real estate agent, helping to get more listings, close more deals. And I'm actually doing live cold calls tomorrow, 3 p.m. Eastern. So I'm going to put a link in the description. It's going to be a webinar style. So you have to register to get the Zoom link, but I'll put that link in the description and I'll see you tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern. You can watch me get a listing appointment. I've made probably getting close to 100 live call sessions. Uh, I don't know where I'm at, maybe 50 to 100 live call sessions right here on my YouTube channel. You can go back and watch, but they're always a lot of fun, uh, entertaining, and I always get business. So anyway, be there for that. Let me know if you have any questions concerning that. Let's dive in here, right? So the DOJ basically turned down this settlement. And the reason being is, as they said, this doesn't fix anything. This doesn't fix the problem. This doesn't fix the reason why we're in this to begin with. And we don't want to walk away with, uh, we, we don't want to walk away from this basically with the same scenario moving forward. You know, basically Keller Williams and Remax came in and said, and anywhere and said, listen, uh, we're going to disclose better. We're not going to make it uh, mandatory that our agents join the National Association of Realtors. We're going to disclose better. We're going to train our agents better on agency and buyer agency and, and all that good stuff. But they didn't say anything about changing the way that real estate agents operate in terms of how the buyer agents are paid and how that commission, how the buyer agent commission, how that number uh, comes to be. And that's what the DOJ has a problem with. They want the buyer to be able to negotiate their commission. <clears throat> and right now, the way it stands, they don't do that. Okay. The buyer, okay. This is how it works right now. A buyer, you know, either went through Zillow or was a referral or you know, you, you got a hold of this buyer somehow as a real estate agent, right? The buyer comes through. You basically just go to work for them. And the way real estate agents do it now, they don't explain anything to the buyer. Okay. Th this is, this is kind of where the problem is. Um, you know, agents haven't done a good job. I'll be the first to admit that we haven't done a good job. I say we, cause I'm a real estate agent. We haven't done a good job of explaining what we do, how we do it, what our value is, how we get paid. Just don't explain it. Why? Well, because this has been going on for the last 30, 40, 50 years, and we haven't we haven't had to explain. Um, you know, we just take the we take the shortcut. We just go find them a property, help them negotiate the deal, get the deal done, help them through the process, get paid. Why? Because our commission as a buyer agent is already figured into the price, the way that the current system works. A listing agent takes a listing and they carve out. A uh, percentage of the uh, of the listing of, of the commission that's agreed on with the seller to give to the buyer's agent. Okay, and honestly, I don't. <laughs> I know this sounds crazy, but I, I don't see I don't see it changing much. I'm going to go through some different scenarios with you, okay, so that you can kind of visualize this, and then you make your own judgment of how you think this is going to play out. Worst case scenario, we're going to be just fine. I can tell you that right now. Closings are going to happen every day. And our job is to connect buyers and sellers, and we will continue to get paid. I'm going to show you some things in, in a couple of different articles here and kind of go through some different scenarios with you. But basically, the DOJ, they just don't like the way that it is. They're not going to take these settlements. And this, this, the you know, what they're talking about here with the with this settlement, they're strictly talking about the Nacella case. All right, the Sitzer Burnett. Um, settlements that's still, you know, happening in the works and processes. We're talking about the Nacelic uh, case, right? And uh, they denied uh, uh, the proposed settlement between the plaintiffs. 
And what it is, is that they say that it, the allegedly uh, anti-competitive role at heart of the lawsuit, it, 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 that they want it to change. All right. They want it to change. All right. And the DOJ says that's not accurate. It's not changing the heart of the lawsuit. All right. It's far from curing the rules defects. Uh, the proposed settlement prematures the very same competitive concerns that trouble the current role. Basically, what they're saying is, is you're still going to be figuring the buyer agent commission into the deal and you're still going to be operating the way that like you're operating, which does it, which does nothing, you know, different to solve, you know, what, you know, these defendants, the, the, the defendants actually were found guilty of when it comes to collusion. Um, you know, under the proposed settlement, they say this would not create a competitive or reduce commissions um, and that it would provide no meaningful benefit to buyers or sellers. And they're right that what they're saying is it wouldn't do much. Right. I mean, the way that the settlement's drawn up, we would just continue to operate the way that we're operating, um, you know, which, you know, the brokerages obviously don't feel like the way they're operating is wrong at all. Further, the proposed changes could themselves violate federal law, right? And they're talking about the antitrust, you know, laws. Allowing sellers and listing brokers to set the commission that buyer brokers would receive would still lead buyer's agents to steer clients away from listings with low commissions. Now, let's talk about steering for just a second, right? Let's talk about steering for just a second because, you know, the DOJ actually said, and I'll show you here, they actually say in this article that, you know, what, you know, you can, as a buyer broker, you can ask the seller in the offer to pay for the buyer commission, or maybe the seller offers concessions. So the way that this is going and the way that, you know, people feel like this is 99% going to happen is that the buyer agent commission fill will be eliminated from MLS altogether. Won't be there, but there's going to be a concessions field. Okay. And so basically, you know, that if the seller decides they want to give concessions towards buyer agent commissions, closing costs, prepaids, whatever, they can put it in the concessions field, all right, um, to go towards any of those closing costs, um, which could include buyer agent commissions. And so for me, it's like, well, if you take the commissions out, if you take the buyer agent commission out of the listing, and just move it over to classified as as concessions. You can't get away from the fact that okay, buyers who want their agent to be compensated, going and looking. And I'm not saying the agents are steering. I'm saying buyers, buyers, buyers looking at homes and saying, "I'm not going to look at that one. They're not going to pay my agent anything. I'm not going to look at this one. Oh, I'm going to go look at this one. They're going to pay the buyer agent commission." So it's not steering from the agent standpoint, okay? It's buyers choosing. That's just the same thing as, as closing costs now, right? Like I'm a buyer. I can only scrape up the down payment. I need my closing costs taken care of. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go out and I'm going to look for a property. They're advertising. They're going to pay for the buyer's closing costs. I'm not going to look at any other houses. This is me, the buyer talking. So I think what they're trying to get away from, they're never going to get away from completely when it comes to people only looking at certain houses that offer certain things. I think that's something they're just going to live forever. Um, they said instead, buyers should negotiate directly with their buyer broker, which could include them paying out of pocket or negotiating with the seller. Right. So let's so listen to what the DOJ is saying. While some buyers might choose to pay their buyer broker out of pocket, other buyers may request in an offer that the seller pay a, speci a specified amount to the buyer broker from the proceeds of the sale. Okay, you're asking the seller to pay it. Thus, the current practice could continue where the seller factors the commissions into the offer the seller is willing to accept. Basically, the seller's net. And that's what it's all going to come down to, guys, is what is the seller netting? To address the anti-competitive landscape that would still exist if the proposed settlement was approved, they suggested that uh, prohibits offers of compensation to buyer brokers by listing brokers, right? If the MLS PIN that's part of the Nacelic lawsuit 
If their rules prohibited sellers and listing brokers from deciding what buyer brokers would be paid, sellers would be responsible for determining only the compensation of their own broker in the listing contract, while buyers would be responsible for determining the compensation of their own broker in a buyer broker representation contract. And the thing for me there is, is, okay, but you just said that they could offer in the offer, they could say they could ask the seller to pay the buyer broker commissions. So now we're right back to the seller actually deciding what the buyer broker is going to make. We're right back to that spot. We're right back there. Now, I know that there is some stuff happening behind the scenes that FHA, uh, VA, USDA, you know, there's there's a push to get the financing, get buyer brokerage fees taken care of in the financing. And, you know, I mean, as far as that goes, like it still has to appraise. So now the seller is still going to pay, you know, I mean, that's what the property's worth out of what the property's worth. They're going to pay a certain amount towards buyer broker fees. It just seems like we're shuffling paperwork around here. That's all this seems like. Seems like you're just shuffling paperwork around here. Now, you know, the scenario for me where I'm like, okay, what's going to happen here is if we come out, this new rule comes into place, they erase buyer broker commission from MLS. And then you have sellers who say, well, I ain't got to pay it. I ain't going to pay it because you're going to have that. You're going to have a mixed bag. You're going to have some with concessions towards buyer brokers. You're going to have some you offer to pay for the seller to pay for the buyer brokers and they accept. You're going to have some that won't. And you're going to have some that don't offer it and end up selling the property. And so then you've got you've got listings that are selling with no broker, buyer broker, um, you know, commission included. And then other sellers see that happen. And you're like, well, if they do it, I can do it. Then they try to do it. I think the problem is going to be is that you've got these buyers out there who want representation. And if you're a buyer who doesn't care about representation, I mean, I talked to a guy in LA last week, I was on his podcast and he was like, I go right to the listing agent. Like, I don't know what, why I need a buyer agent. I don't know why I need someone to represent me, blah, blah, blah. This guy's a sophisticated guy. He's doing, you know, $10 million deals, you know, buying houses for like eight, 10 million. I'm like, yeah, you, you know, you, you do real estate. You know what's going on? Not everybody does. Not everybody does. If I went to Atlanta, to Dallas, to Miami, I would get my own real estate agent. I would want somebody to help me because I know, I know how treacherous it is and I'm an expert in my market. But if I went out of state somewhere, you bet, you bet your ass, I would have my own agent kind of helping me, representing me through the deal. I had a for sale by, had a for sale by owner call me today. The for sale by owner was a client of mine. I sold him the unit condo on the beach. He's calling me saying, Hey, I'm buying this other unit for sale by owner. We're selling ours by owner. I'm calling to ask you, I got this offer and I'm calling to ask you some, for some advice on it. And I was like, this is why you need an agent. Like now I'm consulting you on a deal that I'm not even representing you on. I'm giving you advice on a deal that I'm not even representing you on. You know, I mean, that, <laughs> People think they can do stuff on their own. And some people can, like my guy in LA. Yes, you can do stuff on your own, but not everybody can. And even if you think you can, you run into a weird situation on an offer. You don't know quite how to handle it. You need some advice. So you call a real estate agent. You're for sale by owner. Right? This is just the kind of stuff. I'm just bringing this up because the advancement in, in, in the amount of information that the general public has about property, real estate, et cetera, is at an all-time high. People know more about properties, the market, the comps, everything about the properties. It's at an all-time high, but yet the usage of real estate agents is also at an all-time high. Now, why is that? They know more. Wouldn't more information cause them to not need an agent? It's quite the opposite, ladies and gentlemen. It becomes like Chinese to them. The more information they have, the more overload it is and the more confusing it gets.
And again, I'll repeat, we're at an all-time high when it comes to the amount of people that use real estate agents. It's an all-time high. And that's what's very interesting here in the people that think they can go sell property and own. Give it a shot. Go give it a shot. And if you do great, great. Do it again and again and again, man. Save that money. But for me, it's kind of like I wouldn't have an agent. I mean, I, I would not have an agent if I went to Atlanta, Dallas, New York. There's no way. I wouldn't go into court without a lawyer. It's the same thing to me. That's my opinion. I want peace of mind that I'm not making any mistakes and it's worth whatever money I got to pay. You know, whatever somebody is worth to do that. Uh, let's see. This is the background on the case. You guys know the background. I have to go into all of that stuff. Um, there was a, you know, a case, you know, they basically took them to court. You know, there's a couple cases, you know, the Sister Burnett trial in, in Missouri, they won Kansas city. They won. It's like a $5 billion settlement anywhere. Remax and, and Kelly Williams settled out and it included the Nacellic case, which is, I believe in Chicago. And then, uh, there's been, dozens and dozens and dozens of copycat lawsuits that have popped out from lawyers trying to get that money. They trying to get that money. And, and do you blame them? If you see an opportunity on a development as a real estate agent, you know, it's a, it's a development. Aren't you going to go try to get that listing and develop and, and, and represent that developer on all those units? Yes, you are. Same thing here. They seen a development which is uh, a spawn of class action lawsuits that they that these lawyers could get in on and make some money. Can't blame them for that. That's what they do. That's their job. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Let's see if we get into some more stuff here. Okay, this is still getting into the... Um, we're still getting into the you know, the history, but this is right here. This is where we kind of get, uh, let's see, the critical issue is not how much a seller should offer buyer broker, but whether the seller should set the buyer broker commission at all. Well, that's what they're doing. And the DOJ is literally saying, offer it, you know, put in the offer for the seller to pay. Well, then the seller has to agree to what that amount is. So we're right back where we are. I think it's just a paper shuffle. Um, she said federal law already allows buyers to make conditional offers around compensation. As an example, she said a buyer could offer to pay 700,000 for a home on a condition that the seller pay 14,000 to the buyer broker, which would result in a net of uh, 686,000. Another buyer could offer the same home could offer 680 and not ask the seller to pay a buyer broker, a uh, buyer broker. Such a scenario would allow the seller who's considering multiple offers to compare the net price after factoring in any possible request to pay buyer broker. Of course, that's what they do now. Look at all the terms, see what the net is, and uh, figure out what's best for the seller. Those programs do not require buyers to come up with additional funds at closing in order to compensate their brokers in these types of conditional offers. Buyer, therefore, would not need to come up with additional funds at closing in order to compensate their brokers. Instead, they, they and other bro buyers would benefit from increased competition between buyer brokers. So what, what they're saying is they're trying to create this competition between the agents to go lower on commissions for buyers is what, is what that sounds like to me. Um, and it, it is crazy because, you know, in this other article I'll show you, it's like, you know, they're, <laughs> they're like, well, the commissions haven't, you know, we don't see it really, you know, coming down much. It's like, I mean, why aren't you going out there and saying roofers have to come down on their prices, right? And other contractors and other people that have to do service. It's like there's no regulations on price increases, uh, inflated prices on milk and Coca-Cola and cars. Oh, my God. Man, they, they tacked on a $20,000 fee for fun when I bought my wife at Escalade two years ago for fun. I forgot what they called it, but I mean, he literally told me like, we just can. <laughs> I mean, the guy was like, you know, I was like, what's that for? I was like, cause we can. And he was right. There was, we could not find another one. That was it. We either wanted it or we didn't. And somebody else was in line to buy it. So what are we going to do? Got to pay it. 
Let's see. Do, 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 do. Okay, here we go. This is interesting. The DOJ also suggested some buyer brokers might begin offering hourly rates or flat fee structure under such scenario tailoring to their services to meet a given buyer's wants and needs. And this whole hourly rate, from my understanding, you got to be a W-2. You've got to be a W-2 employee to get hourly rates. So we're 1099s, DOJ. Unless I'm mis misreading the situation, I don't understand you know, the law, the way I see it, we can't work by the hour. We are, we are 1099 independent contractors. I don't know if this is like how we start sliding backwards into a possible hourly rate that turns real estate agents into W2s. Is that what direction we're going in? Anyway, I didn't even think that was possible to charge hourly rates. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, Let's also look at the issue that the fact that there's no guarantee that class members would get paid from the three million proposed settlement amount. Um, they would get paid three to five dollars each. Three to five dollars a piece is what the plaintiffs are looking at on this Nacellic case. It's insane. Uh, Earlier this month, the president of NAR, Kevin Sears, he told that hundreds of agents that at a real estate conference that NAR is appealing the multi-billion dollar verdict in the Sitzer Burnett. But the bigger problem for the industry is the DOJ. We've been in their crosshairs for as long as I've been involved with the National Association of Realtors. We had a settlement with them in 2020. In 2021, they re uh, re reneged on the deal. We sued them when we won in court, so they're pissed off at us. I mean, just candidly. And all that's true. They did. They worked a settlement, and then uh, DOJ reneged, and they've come. They're coming back, and they they lost in court. All right. Let me let me dive over here. I want to show you this. DOJ rejects court settlement and affirms importance of decoupling agent commissions. A lot of this we kind of already covered. The DOJ's uh, opinion virtually guarantees that buyers will eventually be able to negotiate buyer agent commissions that are currently fixed through the industry collusion. It's also likely there'll be a greater variation of agent compensation depending on factors such as agent experience and time spent on the sale. Okay, here's kind of the timeline of events. DOJ litigation begun in the 1940s against the industry adoption of standard rates of commission. The 1940s. Um, a massive 1983 report by the Federal Trade Commission that explained the documented how the industry uses informal collusion informal collusion into couples and coupled rates to set to set these rates 2006 there was a hearing with the doj redfin uh, 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 cfa criticized industry price fixing and it all leads back to you know the sitzer burnett uh, Moore case uh you know being found guilty and all the different copycats now get this let me blow this up the DOJ does not envision compensation system in which buyers must come up with additional cash. Now, read that again. The DOJ does not envision a compensation system in which buyers must come up with additional cash to pay their agents. The agency, the DOJ, agrees that sellers could provide dollar concessions to be used for this compensation and other buyer expenses. However, DOJ stressed that buyers must have the ability to negotiate these commissions uh, then decide what, if any, concessions to seek from sellers. Similarly, sellers would have the ability to decide whether to offer any concessions and, if so, their amount. Some of the details of this decoupled system need to be worked out. It's, it is critically important that buyers negotiate uh, their commissions before an agent searches for properties. Otherwise, buyers' agents could steer buyers to properties with the highest dollar concessions and potential agent compensation. If that's happening now, it's going to continue to happen. I'm not saying it's happening. There's data out there that says it happens. Honestly, I haven't seen it happening. Um, I've never done it. However, whatever research somebody did showed that it was happening. If it's happening, it's going to continue to happen. Because even if the buyer agent signs a, bro signs a broker agent agreement saying, I'm going to pay you this much, still going to show properties. If it's happening now, it's going to continue to happen because some sellers are going to get more commission than others or no commission over others, et cetera. It's also going to happen on the buyer side, right? Because now they may be paying out of pocket. So they're going to go, they're only going to look, this is going to worsen the situation because I think the buyers are going to be more steering than anybody, right? Now they're going to be steering the most, but I guess that's okay. You know, 
I guess that's okay with the DOJ and you know everybody else, as long as it's the buyer that's steering and deciding that they don't want to see properties for reasons of compensation, then maybe that's okay. Um, let's see. It appears that, that the DOJ's opinion was influenced by separate proposals made by CFA and a group of attorneys representing multiple listing services, both of which cited in the footnotes. CFA supports the MLS proposal only as a package deal by eliminating one or two key requirements. The proposal would allow the existing collusive system to continue. The buyer agent be prohibited from being compensated by both buyer and seller practice that NAR code of ethics disapproves of. Okay. Let's see. The, the, the CFA emphasizes that it's not easy to completely eliminate price fixing. So there, so listen to that. They're saying that it's not easy to completely eliminate price fixing significant um, asymmetries between consumers and agents provide uh, opportunities for continued price fixing within a decoupled system. Agents could tell a buyer and seller clients that two and a half to three percent rates, you know, five to six total, were normal, and agents could refuse to negotiate these rates, as many listing agents currently do. Um, that, that there's some research that have found that many agents don't go below five or six percent. I mean, it's like, okay, um, you know, what? Don't let Disney charge so damn much for a coca-cola i mean it's ridiculous uh the prices you pay for a little stuffed animal down there um you know contractors roofers you know flooring guys plumbers you're just gonna like go and tell them they gotta basically go down you gotta you gotta work for less now it's crazy it's insane to ensure significant price fixing uh, to, to secure significant price competition, both buyers and sellers would need to discuss and try to negotiate compensation with their agents. Even then rates would unlikely would be unlikely to fall immediately. Okay. So it's like, this is their thing. They want, they want commission rates to fall. I've, I've seen this in this article a couple of times. I've seen it in the, in the MN article a couple of times. Like, why are you guys trying to make it fall? Why don't you let the market speak okay put all these rules in place and then let the market speak if they fall they fall if that's what happens through competition that you want that you're creating let it fall why are we trying to force force it to fall even then rates would unlikely to will be unlikely to fall immediately yet over time could decline to an average of three to four percent level saving consumers an estimated 20 to 30 billion annually with a much greater variation in types of compensation and rates charged by different agents. No longer would inexperienced agents be able to charge the same rates as a highly competent agent with years of experience. So that's kind of where, where they're going with this whole thing. <laughs> you, know, you know, it sounds like they want rates to go down to three, four percent. They want new agents to basically work for nothing. And then they'll be happy. It's like, do what? What are you talking about? It's like everything inflates, but I've been getting five or six percent since 2002 when I got in real estate. It's never went up. It didn't go up to six and a half. It didn't go up to seven, but everything else increased. Now, yes, the price of homes increased, so that makes the commission increase. So, you know, at least we got that going for us. But the fact is, the percentage rate has not. It's actually come down um, slightly because you look at the national, you look at the average of commission rates, like five point something, like. Normally it's like 5.5. That's kind of the normal. You know, I think right now it's like 5.1, 5 5.2. 5 it's a little bit down. Anyway, nevertheless, this is kind of where we are. This was an interesting article. Buyer agents are already cutting commissions, the download. And basically, this article, it was crazy because they suck you in with the with the title, you know, of the article. And then once you get in here, you realize they're just talking about one little uh discount broker. Right, it's the broker of uh, De Leon Realty in Palo Alto, California. Um, you know they're doing three and a half percent, with two and a half going to the uh, listing agent, one percent going to the buyer agent. It's and then what they do is they go, they go, they receive one percent or ten thousand dollars. So I guess there's a a, a limit of a floor of ten thousand dollars they give the buyer agent, and one percent, uh, you know, total if it's more than ten thousand. 
two and a half goes. But this is just this is just one brokerage uh, in California that's just a discount brokerage. Um, and I thought this was funny. While in the industry uh, have long complained, many in the industry have long complained about so-called discount brokerages. How can it be a discount if there's no standard commission rate? One might wonder. Brokers who are flexible on commissions see us as, as a customer-friendly service first choice. The thing about that is, is there's no set prices for, you know, getting a house built, right? But there are discount home builders. And like, there's no standard because when you look at MLS, dude, everybody charges something different. 5.4, 5.5, 5.6, 4.5, 3.4, 3.9. They're all different. You know, you, they're all negotiated. I understand what they're saying. The buyer doesn't get a chance to negotiate their side because it's all figured in. But that, I mean, th that solves a lot of the problems. Now, with, with representation, I believe, with representation. Now, we're going to move into this other world. This is where we're headed. And so then you have to think, okay, I have one friend that thinks that 40% of agents are going to leave the industry. Leave the industry. Be gone out of the industry uh, because of this, right? It's just going to crush them. It's just going to crush the buyer's agents. You know, commissions are going to go down, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? And then I have another friend who makes a lot of sense. And he said, no, that's not going to happen. He's like, think about it. Number one, the demographic. The And by the way, his name's Tim Harris, if you're watching smart guy. Um, he said, if you know, the demographics and like the, 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 like generation coming up, like, and he didn't say this number, I'm throwing this out there. I think we'll hit a year where we get back to a, a 7 million transaction year in the, in the next five to 10 years. I think that could, that could very well be a reality. Um, but the real estate agent as a real estate agent, it's a sexy oc occupation. Like it, like it's glamorous. People are always going to have this allure to it. It's always going to have this allure that draws people in. Now, the agents that are there that aren't selling anything, 50% of the agents out there sold one property or less in the last 12 months. Those agents, it's like, why would they leave? Because if you make it to where it's not mandatory to leave NAR or to be a part of NAR, that saves them money right there. If they do this decoupling thing, it's not going to be mandatory that you're part of MLS. OK, if you're not if it's not mandatory that you're part of MLS, and you're part of NAR, that that reduces their fees significantly. That's most of their fees to be in business, not selling anything. So if it's going to be if it's going to be cheaper to stay in the business than it was and they're selling one property a year, two properties a year, whatever, why would they get out? It's going to be cheaper to stay in than it would to be, you know, than it was before, you know, and they still kind of like are hanging on to this dream. And he's right. So. I got one friend, James. I got another friend, Tim. I'd love to get you guys, you both of you guys on a podcast. And like, I would love to get both of you guys on a podcast to kind of debate this issue with agents leaving the business. Um, Cause I, I'm kind of like, what's going to happen? <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm excited to see whatever it is. I can tell you that. And I know there's going to be massive opportunity. So with that, I'll leave you guys with it. I'll be making live calls tomorrow. I'll put a link in the description right now for you to go and sign up for that webinar. It's like webinar style and I'll be on there and I'm going to, I'm going to show you, I'm going to break down, you know, going in there and finding the best, highest quality leads. I'm going to call them right there in front of you. So you can see the whole thing go down. I'm going to set some list of appointments. It's going to be a lot of fun, right? I'll see you guys on the next video. And if you found any value in this at all, hit subscribe and I'll make another one in a couple days, teaching you guys something else. We'll see you soon. Everybody wanna be the boss, but it costs and these lames ain't like me. Drop